Chase Claypool was just traded to the Dolphins for just about nothing and a lot of Chargers fans wanted to trade for him and add him to this wide receiver room after the loss of Mike Williams and it wasn't just Chase Claypool that a lot of Chargers fans were wanting it was guys like Darnell Mooney Marquise Brown a lot of Kyle Pitts Kyle Pitts is probably not going to be traded but um, I'm with you on that one. Kyle Pitts, I'd love to see Kyle Pitts in a Chargers uniform. But back to Chase Claypool. When you look at their playing styles, there's a lot of similarities between Chase Claypool and Mike Williams. So I understand why a lot, a lot of Chargers fans wanted this to happen. They're both big and physical wide receivers and they're not very fast, but they're good in contested catches. So it made sense that a lot of people wanted to see him fill that hole that Mike Williams' injury created. But even though he was traded for half a bag of chips and a candy bar, I'm glad that the Chargers did not make that move. And let me tell you why. So make sure to like and subscribe if you do enjoy the content. And listen, man, Chase Claypool, he started out his career really well but then in 2021 the year that he really should have taken over that pittsburgh steelers wide receiver room and separated himself from those other guys there he failed to do so but it didn't knock down his confidence whatsoever listen to what he said on this podcast right here i know i'm a top five receiver yeah. i know i'm a top three receiver yeah. I'm you know what I'm saying? Like, keep going. Yeah, keep going. It. You know, I, I just got to prove to numbers? people. Right? When I'm working, I'm like, oh, you know what I'm saying? I'm a dog. Like, right, 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 right. <laughs> like, I'm a dog. People line up across from me, too. And I just got to bring that confidence. And I got to bring that spirit. And I just got to show the people. And uh, it's going to happen. And we're going to rewind this. And we're going to see this clip in, in a little bit. And they're like, damn. Uh, okay. So with his belief that he is a top wide receiver in the NFL, which meant, you know, shout out to him. I love when guys believe in themselves like that, but it is a little delusional for him to say that. Let's just be real. The Steelers didn't think that he was as good as he thought he was because of his lack of effort on routes and blocks when the play was not designed to go to him. And so they traded him to the Bears in the mid-season of 2022 for that Second round pick really was like a first round pick because it was 32 overall. And then the Bears, they got frustrated with his lack of effort and traded him away for, like I said, basically nothing to the Dolphins. It was a late round pick swap. Uh, it was Chase Claypool in a seventh for a sixth rounder. I mean, that just give me a bag of Cheetos. And Chase Claypool caused tons of issues in the locker room, saying the Bears were not utilizing him correctly. And the Bears responded by benching him and then obviously getting rid of him. So this is not the kind of guy that you want in the locker room. And I think that's another reason why JC Jackson was traded so early on in his contract because he was beginning to cause problems in the locker room and also because of the court case and obviously because the on the field product that JC Jackson was putting out there. I mean, he was not nearly as good as we were all expecting him to be and as good as that money said he should have been. But listen, I give the Chargers credit for cutting ties as early as they did, but still it is a red flag for me that Brandon Staley could not utilize him as well as he should have. And also, yes, JC Jackson, I'm not defending him entirely, but I'm not putting all of the blame for his time with the Chargers just on him. This was both a failure on his part as well as the organization. We have to acknowledge that. I'm not going to play favorites on either side here. But back to the point. Chase Claypool, he seems like a troublemaker in the locker room due to that lack of effort on the field, and he just kind of seems like a diva. He would not have been a good fit for the Chargers in this locker room, especially because a guy like JC Jackson, you're just getting rid of him. So why would you add a guy that is going to cause the same kind of problems that JC Jackson probably would have caused in the locker room? So then what are we going to do at wide receiver? Because Chase Claypool was just traded to the Dolphins. The Dolphins are giving Tua everything that he needs. So we got to give Justin Herbert everything he needs, right? We need to add a weapon to this offense. We need to have someone in place because Mike Williams just got down. We need to trade for someone, sign for somebody. I mean, we got the money to work with after this JC Jackson trade, right? Well, I don't really think that we need to add anybody at wide receiver, to be honest with you guys. I certainly don't think they're going to trade for one because of cap issues over the next few seasons, but also because, I mean, there really aren't many good options to trade for right now, realistically. 
The best option is maybe Marquise Brown on the Cardinals, but the Chargers can't really afford that. Cardinals would have to really take on a lot of that cap, and I don't really think that's going to happen. Also, I don't really think they even need him because I want you guys to remember a name, Jalen Guyton. He's going to be coming back soon, man. He was on IR to start the season, designated to return. He could come back after this bye week against the Cowboys. And once Jalen Guyton comes back, you guys got to remember, Justin Herbert and Jalen Guyton were like this. They were dogs. That was one of Herbert's favorite co uh, guys to throw to. I just hit my dog in the face with my leg, by the way. She's right here. I don't. Yeah, there you can see her. But listen, Jalen Guyton is that deep threat that could honestly take the role of what Mike Williams was earlier on in the season. You throw deep to him, obviously Jalen Guyton is not going to be the jump ball kind of guy. And that's really the only factor that you're going to be missing in this offense. An elite jump ball guy, which is extremely valuable to any offense that you have. But how are you going to replace the loss of Mike Williams? I already said Jalen Guyton is going to be coming back very soon, but also Austin Eckler is going to be coming back very soon. And you can use Austin Eckler in so many different spots. You can use him in so many different ways. Yeah, he's a running back, but he's shifty. He's fast. He makes so many guys miss. Put him in the slot. But I mean, line him up at fullback. Line him up at tight end. I mean, you could use him in so many different ways and cause so much misdirection in the backfield. I trust Kellen Moore to do a ton of things with not only Jalen Guyton and Austin Eckler, but then don't forget about Darius Davis. That man is so shifty. You can put him in the backfield. We already saw that 51-yard freaking run last week against the Raiders. Darius Davis is a dude. I am telling you, you have a shifty guy like that, it adds so much value to your offense, especially because now we're waiting on Austin Eckler to come back. We're going to have two guys that are really good at making dudes miss and have great ball carrier vision. And also, don't forget about freaking Quentin Johnston, man. Ever, I see so many people disrespecting Quentin Johnston, saying that he's a bust so early on in his freaking career. Come on now. How, how long are you going to give this guy to say he's a bust? It's been four weeks into the season, and he's really only had two weeks of legit actual NFL action because Mike Williams has been gone those two weeks, and that's when he was stepping up a little bit, seeing an increase in snaps. And really, he hasn't been getting that many targets but, uh, by Justin Herbert, either because he doesn't trust him, to uh, doesn't trust Quentin Johnson, and doesn't want to throw that way, or just because... That's just the way it's been going so far. And the targets have been going to Josh Palmer specifically a lot more now that Mike Williams is gone. And Keenan Allen, don't even forget about him. He's obviously going to pick up the slack a little bit. He's probably going to take on a lot more targets even now that Mike Williams is gone. He was already the leading targeted wide receiver, the leading targeted weapon in this offense with 43 targets. Next closest guy is Josh Palmer with 21. That is less than half, bro of what Keenan Allen has right now. But we have so many weapons in this offense that are going to be coming back very, very soon. Jalen Guyton and Austin Eckler are coming back. We already got Darius Davis and Quentin Johnson ready to step up that the loss of Mike Williams, we don't need to add anybody to this team. And Justin Herbert, listen, I know a lot of people like to make excuses saying he doesn't have a lot of weapons, doesn't have the weapons that Tua has. But I, I like a lot of these weapons that the Chargers have on offense. Austin Eckler, Keenan Allen is an elite wide receiver, even with the loss of Mike Williams. Like I said, guys like Darius Davis and Quentin Johnson are, are going to step up. We're going to see what we really have in this offense. And I'm so freaking excited to see it. Obviously, it sucks that Mike Williams is gone. He was obviously going to be playing and having a great season. He started off so well, but oh my gosh. I have so much confidence in Darius Davis and Quentin Johnston to pick up the slack, man. Because, let me tell you something. Quentin Johnston, first round wide receiver, he looks great at TCU. Are we forgetting how good he looked at TCU? Darius Davis, the speedster, absolutely killing it so far in the season. Stepping up last week against the Raiders. Come on now. We got weapons. <laughs> And I understand the desire to add to a group of wide receivers, right? Because 
you lose a guy like Mike Williams, it scares you because you think that you need to add more value to offset the loss that he's created. But what we need to do is just have the guys in that room right now, that the, uh, the running backs and the wide receivers that we have right now, and give them more targets, give them more of an opportunity to show what they have because they can bring so much value to this team. And speaking of value to the team, check out Khalil Mack against the Raiders, putting on a record-setting performance. Six sacks, man. This guy was balling out.